Good evening and welcome to March 21st, 2022, Common Council of City Carsville. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilwoman Diana Phillips. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Frank, sorry about being here, so it's glad you will have a seat. Quick reminder everyone, please turn your cell phone ringers off and we will begin with roll call. Councilman Gray? Present. Councilman Collins? Present. Councilman Warner? Here. Councilman Baird? Present. Councilman Williams Jr. Councilman Phillips? Present. Councilman Rob. We do have a quorum. And everyone has the minutes for the March 7th, 2022 regular meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Move on down to new business. We have the public hearing and pending approval of pending orders 3775, increase in park, park, and park building rental fees. Um, Catherine, you want to point before we open the public hearing? Can I just give a overview of everything? So what we're looking to update, we've gone through all our contracts and we're just making little revisions. Um, we are looking to change the two highlighted things on this policy. Um, so number six at the top, we're adding that. And then we are adding, um, we are changing this used to just say basketball practice and we're changing it to basketball, volleyball, and indoor pickleball at $20 per hour. I don't think I made, did I get the four nonprofit rentals in there? Or was I too late? It was too late. I was say it went in the paper on the same day you I think those asked. are the only two changes then, so. Anybody have any questions for how we the public hearing? So the rates aren't increasing, right? No, they're not increasing. We just added um, volleyball and pickleball to the $20 per hour. Because those are new. Because they were not listed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll open it up for the public hearing. Does anyone from the public have anything to say about the park ordinance? Come out there, Clint. No, sir. Okay, I will close the public hearing and open it up to the council for uh, approval of pending warrants 3775 on first reading. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. I have a motion to suspend the rules. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. And I have a motion for a third and final reading. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you very much. We have two here in a row, pending orders 3776, non-bargaining park employees, and 3777, park contractual revised salary orders, Rosemary. Just uh, cleaning up some languages and taking uh, the part-time labor um, per contract up to 1050. Any other questions? Is that the only changes? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the pending orders 3776 and 3777 on first reading. Motion. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. I have a motion to suspend the rules. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. And I have a motion for third and final reading. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same same. Motion carried. Okay, I have approval of pending orders 3778, delete handicap parking space at 334 West 12th Street. Uh, the board of works approved this and sending it to your approval to remove this uh, handicap parking spot. Any questions? If not, I entertain a motion to approve pending orders 3778 on first reading. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. I have a motion to suspend the rules. Motion. 
Second. Have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. And then a motion for third and final reading. So moved. Second. Have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And I have resolutions 2022 and through 23 uh, reimbursements. Rosemary? Resolution 2022-23 is a resolution to reimburse $15 into cable telephone. Resolution 2022-24 is a resolution to reimburse $60.35 into park telephone. Resolution 2022-25 is a resolution to reimburse $934.98 into police telephone. Questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2022-23 through 2022-25. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, next we have pending ordinance 3779, the park protection ordinance. Sorry? No, that's okay. David, you want to give a little talk about this ordinance okay so in short <clears throat> the pbo or the park protection ordinance is to give at the very least police officers a tool in order should a police officer be called into the park or any city recreational area if a police officer is called and there is a sex offender there on the registry currently there is nothing there that can make that person leave a park facility. With this ordinance, it will then allow a police officer to say, hey, you can't be in this area, and then make them leave. That is the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, it is a tool. It's not something that is going to cause a bunch of arrests. Uh, this is simply allowing the police officers to do what they do uh, and reinforces what they're able to do. Are there any questions or... What if they refuse to leave? What? Once they refuse, if they refuse to do so, then state guidelines, state IC code then takes over. And then it could be a case of resisting law enforcement, uh, disorderly conduct, that kind of thing. I have a question on, uh, I guess, paragraph 20, the longer paragraph at the bottom. And Jeff, you may be, this may be for you. Uh, where it says um, this section shall not apply to any person who is within or upon such property for the purpose of attending any electoral polling place for the purpose of voting or campaigning for a candidate for political office at such, at, at such electoral polling place or attending an organized gathering for a political purpose. Is that something that's mandated to be in there? I mean, are, is yeah, it? We don't want, I, I don't think we want to, we want to say anything about they could that's for the that's not our role to stop someone from being able to be at a polling place or to be able to vote now the voting i don't have a problem with mm -hmm. if they're allowed if they're by statute allowed mm -hmm. to vote it's the last two parts campaigning and attending an organized political gathering sure um because public speech is because public political speech is so protected it's not something that i would want to Okay. It's I, not something I would want to restrict in this. Okay. I, I understand your question and it makes sense, but I, I I don't think we should restrict that. Okay. All right. Just, Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I, I wondered about that, but I just wanted to brief the question. No, great question. Any other questions? I want to okay. so, go ahead with what you're doing. Go ahead. No, this isn't the motion, part of the motion. <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve pending orders 3779 on first reading? Uh, so I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. And do I have a motion to suspend the rules? So I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. And do we have a motion for third and final reading? So moved. Second. A motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. No, I'd I like want to say that. I want to thank Jaden for his work on this. He did a lot of work. Yes, and I, I, I appreciate that. Well, there's a lot of council members that reached out and talked, and everybody's input was appreciated. So, 
Thank you all mayors and all lawyers. Something, something that needs to be done. Yes, absolutely. Jeff was extremely involved. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate everybody. I tried to make sure that we communicated and reached out and uh, made sure everybody had some kind of input. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Thank you. We want to next down to the Adam Stone. You want to come up, sir? We, as many of you know, we have been studying the trash review for quite some time now. We do have a trash committee set up. Uh, Brian Dobbs on it. Brian Dobbs in it. Brad Culper and Rosemary's been in on it. So we've been meeting, just trying to understand our trash rate fees, where we're at, and um, where we need to go. So, Adam. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Adam with Stone Municipal Group. And I, I understand that you all have a copy of, of the report as well. I'll be referencing that um, a little bit throughout the presentation um, this evening as well. Uh, you can go ahead and advance the next slide, please. So a couple, couple different items that um, we'll, be, we'll be sharing with you all this evening is we wanted to mostly start with a review of current trends. Uh, the methodology that we used for the projection was 100% based on historical uh, average revenue and expense trends. And then on top of that, we've overlaid any specific departmental needs with regards to any capital equipment um, and then any programmatic costs that relates to the recycling program have been overlaid in that as well. Uh, there's a proposed rate structure within our consultant's report as well as a comparison to private public uh, rates as well, both current and then over the uh, phases that the recommended rates are, are structured as well. Next slide, please. So um, the, first, uh, the first place that we looked was just we worked with uh, Rosemary's office and reviewed historical trends with regards to revenue and expenditures for trash operations. Um, the, the current operations are actually done through a, a couple different uh, functional groups with the city. Uh, namely, landfill, the transportation station, solid waste, as well as Department of Transportation or Street also participate as a, a cost center with, within delivery of trash service. So when we combined all of those uh, statements, both from a revenue and expense standpoint, here are the aggregate amounts year over year since 2018. Um, I should clarify that the 2022 amounts are budgeted amounts, not actual amounts. So that's the current adopted budgets for those for those uh, for that year. And what I would point out is that um, you can see in 2020 um, there was a net revenue uh, negative result, and then in 2022 there's actually a forecasted budgeted deficit um, as well. And then you can see it graphically as far as a percent of revenue down below. Um, what I would also call out here is that um, about 25% of all of DOT's expenses are being allocated uh, currently to trash operations, which is a significant uh, portion, uh, portion of that. And currently, none of that is being uh, really recovered through that, through that revenue stream. Also, from my perspective, um, as a, a financial advisor, I would also point you to the trend percentages in the far right. Um, if there is one major takeaway from, from our report, it would be this. When we look at the historical amounts, revenue on average rounded to a whole percentage points has actually stayed flat since 2018, while expenses have grown 3% per annual uh, per year throughout that term. This is going into, as well publicized and documented, a high inflationary period as well. Um, so one takeaway is that revenue has remained constant um, over the last few years. Expenditure expenses have slightly increased. And when we look back historically, uh, our understanding is that the current rate structure has been in place specifically on the user side for over 10 years. Next slide, please. So the next conversations that we had were with the department. And obviously, it's a very capital equipment intensive operation to do curbside trash uh, waste removal and the their the department has existing needs immediate needs to replace some of that frontline equipment namely being a placement of a trash truck 
Uh, this is in addition to the one that's already currently in order, as well as they're currently evaluating the replacement of a front end loader as well. You can see the current estimated cost uh, there. There are some trade-in opportunities that are being explored, and the city is evaluating using, I believe, Indiana Bond Bank's lease, lease purchase program to try to defray those costs out over time and work them into the, just the annual budget process. And then points three and four are additional points that I would um, want to make sure to present to council as well. The first is we want to make sure that there's a replacement reserve uh, set up moving forward that um, is able to address any kind of additional equipment, station, or facility needs that aren't currently known or forecasted. And then uh, more indirectly, uh, be able to stabilize the DOT department as well but essentially make sure that their that trash is standing is self-supporting and standing uh, covering its own costs and that it's sufficient and solvent um, in that in that goal next slide please um, as far as the assumptions um, based on the historic trend we wanted to be pretty conservative with revenue growth specifically here account growth um, when we looked at expenses the current uh, uh, national inflation is seven and a half percent. We we actually dialed that down so slightly, so we we forecasted in a four percent inflationary growth. We did work in a five percent repair and replacement reserve. So that essentially, think about that as every dollar of revenue, a nickel gets allocated to future replacement. Um, there is the the nice thing about that at current at the current revenue estimates over a five year period of time that's estimated to uh, systematically reserve about $300,000, which is the current purchase price in today's dollars of a trash truck. So that's somewhat of the methodology we use there. Um, and then lastly, the new um, the proposal also includes a uh, contemplated rate structure for the recycling program. So we're estimating an initial adoption of 500 um, new participants the way that's structured is that it would be a monthly monthly fee to use it and a, and a deposit for the bin, um, which is noted in the report. Next slide, please. So these rates are assuming no change. So if, if the current rates stay the same and there's no addition, there's no change in the uh, trash monthly fee or no addition of a recycling fee, but we essentially add in the cost of recycling and we add in the cost of the new equipment. Leave everything else constant, uh, but for our inflationary um, requirements. The, the math is projecting a growing deficit by year. So the loss widens in the current year to over $190,000 or 20% of revenue and grows uh, to nearly 32% of revenue by the end of 2026 or nearly $300,000 per year shortfall. Um, obviously that is not sustainable with the current uh, cash position of the utility, which leads us to the proposed rate, rate structure change um, that's outlined in our report and, and up for discussion. Um, the, last, the last slide is just a visual example of that rate um, over time. So we're, uh, we're recommending a $14 per month uh, fee with a $7 a month optional recycling uh, fee as well. That's after, that's the monthly amount and then the bin would require a deposit. And then essentially over time, we'd look to see that trash fee slightly increase um, over time to just keep up with inflation. Um, we did do some surveying with local private opportunities that, that your citizens would be able to use as far as private party um, waste management services in today's dollars. The average of those trash only are, are uh, nearly $30 per month. So um, even in year five of the trash only, it's still um, more favorable than a private, private party in today's dollars. Uh, based on based on the surveys that we uh, have received. Otherwise, I, I also included our full report that has all the historical and the projections at the line item level. I know it's a, a lot of information, so I wanted to come today, walk through it, and more importantly, answer any questions that you may have. 
my understanding of your agenda is there's no action tonight whatsoever. Uh, I just wanted to come and, and personally present this information and try to do my best to answer any questions. Uh, I know it's a big decision, um, but I guess my takeaway, my final takeaway as I've looked at this, is takeaway number one is the rates haven't changed in a long period of time. Revenue organically has not grown. Expenses have. Uh, takeaway number two after looking at this is that even if you put recycling off to the side, the current trash operations without any staff change or anything are, are higher than what users are currently paying. And that gap is currently being paid from DOT. Um, so the second takeaway I would have is that this is really trying to make sure that um, trash moving forward is solvent and self-sustaining. Self um, but that I'll, be, I'll take any questions that you may have with regards to our report or any of our assumptions. 5% uh, repair and replacement reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of light, isn't it? Um, you know, it, it's, the mayor and I have had this conversation. It is a, it's a, de a debatable assumption. Um, I, would, I would argue that it should be really no less. We've seen communities that have it as low as 1% and some have it significantly higher than 10%. So I think it's a policy decision. Um, it does directly impact the rate requirement. So we try to be conservative and, and split the difference while also having a rationale to support it as well with, you know, assuming every five years you may need an additional truck to kind of work it in that way. So I think it's a policy decision by council if you decide that you wanted it to be higher or lower. I felt comfortable based on other other things that we've seen setting it at a 5% five, 5 for discussion purposes. And that's based on revenue? Yes. Yes, it's 5% of our 877000 is 43000 a year. That's correct. Oh, I, mean, I that's did that, but, but the actual cost of repair and replacement parts is much more than 5%, I believe. It should be lower with two new trash trucks on the road yeah. over the next five years. And then the, the 500 customers, that's typically about 43% is what you're going to get for recycling. Mm. It's been what I've found in the studies I've done. I don't think we have a number when of we did pick, When we did pick up before for free, it was 8% of the trash. So we tried to keep it somewhere around a little higher than that. So but when we did it for free, it was 8% of our trash. We, we, were, we were, a little bit, were a little high on that number also. So is the 5% five, five just for trash replacement, or yeah. can it be used for any other street? Just be for yeah. trash at this point. It's intended to... Um, help trash be able to replace direct frontline equipment or facilities that it needs. So even if even if there's something that street department may use that in five years, like President was saying, that's, maintenance is going to go down on it. But if we have something else related to trash that we could use that for, yes, that's correct. Okay, it's intended to be essentially a. Um, I don't want it to seem too generalized because I I think the intent is that it's itemized right. to trash. But you think about it, it's, it's their own rainy day, essentially. So if there's something that's within this report at this time, it's a five-year projection, which is hard to do for any business in the world. Um, we're tr what we're trying to do is, is create a way to where if something breaks that we just don't have visibility to at this point in time, that they systematically have some money reserved to do that right. without having to come back and adjust rates. Does that, does that answer your question? So I know that you started this before our fees went up for the trucking, because we were just talking about it last week. So the... We quote included the trucking increase in here. Okay. We don't know exactly what the trash fees are going to do. We got an idea on the tipping fees. Yeah. So we kind of, th that we're covering on that. The truck fees, right, remember it was almost doubled, didn't they? The pools? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they went up significantly. I um, mean, obviously, you know why. The price of diesel is going through the roof and everything else. So um, we, 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 we included all that in here. So we should be good with that. To, to your point, I think it's a good question. And to your point, too, I think one of the things we would, we would encourage is um, 
some degree of an annual review on this too, as far as rate sufficiency. These five-year timelines are a pretty long period of time, for, as, as we mentioned earlier. So I think having a systematic review would be something I'd also recommend because that way it allows us to have that true up between actuals and our projections so that if we're ahead or behind, we can, we can course correct. He's already got the model built, so it'll be easy to add on to it. It's, it, it's, it, it we, it's a good, uh, it's a good way to see where we, where we've made good projections and where we haven't. The prices you quoted was that for when you reached out? Did you reach out to private companies or something? Okay. Well, now I know you said individual price, but I assume that's going to be a little more expensive for an individual than if they did a, an entire city. Did they give Correct. a ballpark on that? I have not had those conversations. I don't know if that is. <clears throat> so those numbers are very general, but what I did was just basically said, if we called your company and asked you to start picking up our trash instead of us doing it, what would you charge each household? And what they said was between 28 and $30. That would just be for trash. Recycling would be added fee and everything else. Would be in addition. So. Maybe trash would be a fee too. Yeah. Yeah. And just one thing, what Rosemary said, I think is true. I've said before that I expect us to get 10 years out of those trucks because we have two. Mm -hmm. So it should stretch out. With, without something unexpected happening, they should last much longer. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a different number than what you got, Brad. But the numbers I got varied anywhere from $18 per head. That's including recycling and trash. And uh, the low side was 16, no, I'm sorry, $14. Who are you calling? Nobody does pick up for $14, Clarence. Well, that's funny. Waste management gave me a price of $14 to $15. Well, I'm, when I talk to them, I'm talking to the account representative that would actually be setting the fees. And, uh, and that was it. And I, did, I do that too. So you talked to the account representative, and he told you 814 when he told me 28, or he told you what? Waste management told me uh, 14 to $15 that four-year contract. Rumpke told me it would be somewhere around 13 to $16 with, with uh, recycling and trash pickup. Best way told me together it would be $18. $13 for trash and $5 for... So was recycling. the question that you proposed to them that the whole town, they were going to be picking up the whole town, or were you just asking the if city. they... You were, were you just asking if they came to your house and got it? I was including the city. Well, that is directly contrary to what I was told, so I don't know. We would have to... Well, my, my suggestion is that we get a hold of these people and have them give us a bid. That way we're going to have something in semen. Well, it's hard to bid something we don't intend to do. So I got what I got was general numbers from them just by asking them, them the general question. Well, our figures here are, are exaggerated then because um, it, it's not correct. If they're, just, if they're giving us the price from... Who did you talk to? Who was the person? Who was the person at Waste Management that told you that? Uh, it's a female. I can't remember her name now. If you're going to bring information, bring names. Let's move on. I sat right across the table from both of them, and then none of them said that. Yeah. I'm telling you what they told me, because they, they, I actually called the company, and the company had her call me. She's the one that does it. But you didn't get her name? No. Well, we can talk to them together and try to figure out why we're getting two different numbers. I don't know why we just don't get bids from them. Because that implies you're going to do something, and I don't think we intend to do that. Well, I, I don't think we should increase our rates for the public if, if we don't go around trying to get the best deal for our citizens. Jeff, we're doing that. how much do you pay for your trash pickup? Me? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in the country, so I pay a lot. Okay, so but... I'd be happy to pay 14 Um I don't would be happy to pay... If they lock you in for a year, great. What are you going to do year two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Yeah. When the, I mean, what are you they're do they're more than happy to go out four or five years, depending on the company. 
because that, they can foresee what's going on in, in four or five years. That's my point. We're not, you know, I don't think we're doing a, the justice to the citizens if we don't do the whole. We've been doing it. Whole, we we met with every single one of them. How can you say like we're not doing We're not doing our due diligence, and we've been discussing this with all of these people. Literally I'm just getting a different years, number than you're getting. I don't two know. Two years of this trash rate study. So you coming up with these numbers well, in the last week or not? I don't know. Th th this is the only trash rate studies I've seen. It's because you're not in the committee. It hasn't been forwarded to council either. It doesn't have to be clearance. But we're the ones that have to prove the money. <clears throat> so I, I still think that to do the justice to the citizens, I think we should offer a contract up to these people. Well, all they the, they can all the services and see what they say. They can go to Rumpke and waste management management themselves and get individual contracts with them. They do not have to have city trash pickup. They have that right to go out elsewhere. But we're, in, we're in, living in a city. We're paying city taxes. This, this should be offered up to the citizens not to have to pay extra fees if they don't have to. What she's saying is they don't have to. If they want to if they want to investigate, they can go with waste management or best way or well, rumpy. You know, they can you know do that on their own. They're not going to get the, the rate they're going to get if they can't get the whole city. Because individuals aren't going to get the rate that the city can get. They are getting county. But they're not offering the whole city pickup by any other company. That's the problem. The trash rate study was based on comparisons. I understand that. But it's still, nevertheless, it's not correct. Did you request that in writing? Did you request a, a written... They are not going to give me a ballpark fake. They're not going to give me in writing unless we get serious about a contract. They can give you a contract, and that doesn't mean that you have to accept it. So you can get rate studies on these three or four, whoever you want to contact, and they'll give you a contract on what they think they can do it for. And we did that. We sat down with every single one of them and got those numbers, and we presented those numbers. Well, you know, I, I find it difficult to believe that that would vary from... The high side, eighteen dollars to twenty. Too. I think we do too. Twenty some dollars, no, almost twenty five dollars. That's a that's a pretty good jump. Out of the four dollars you were asking for, uh, we're bringing it up to fourteen for the total for regular trash. Mm -hmm. The recycling does that change? What was the price now? Does that change too, or is that just nothing? Okay. No charge now. Okay. Okay. So that's including. It's not included. Currently, you drop off your recycle at either the transfer station or the street department. We're not picking it up right now. Right. Okay. This Even is, this, is that, a, okay. this is okay. an option to. Um, the option is to make a deposit of the toter, have a second toter, so they can can pick it up. Gotcha. Just like you'd have the option to have a second toter for regular trash, you pay for the same amount. When they did pick up before, there was no charge, but they basically just kind of drove around town and saw who had them out. So, like, I would just sit the bags out by the, the road, and so on Thursdays they would pick it up. Um, with the new recycling program, we would have the, the same totes that we have now, different collared widths, and it's going to be more programmed, like, they'll know who they're going to each week. Gotcha. Any other questions? Comments? Got out of here, you might as well ask. Okay, I would like to make a motion to advertise for a public hearing for our trash rate fees on the next council meeting, which is, let me get my calendar up, I didn't write it down before. I'd, I'd like April, to I see think. us do contracts on the three and then compare that before we, we get into doing rate fees to see if we can save any money by the city and the citizens. They've literally already met with all of them, Clarence. Do you have a contract? They've literally met with all of them. Do you have a them. contract? Do you? Do you? You don't even have a name. I have the names of some people. 
that's not important if we don't do a contract written contract because they'll yep. dip, they'll give yep. you a better that's bid. Not even the point. You do the have names of people or you don't. A little bit ago you said you didn't have a name. Now you're I saying got you a have name a name of one person and that's that's neither here or there. It is here. If, if we're not going to get a contract, the name's not important. Well, if we can't, we have to, if we can trace back to who actually gave the information, it is important. Well, if you contact the people that did the rates, then they'll know who it is. It's just the way I did it. We well, always take for, ask for a name when you're asking for something like that. Well, you know, you have to do research on this stuff to get the best price for the customer, and the customer is the taxpayer. And we and did. did. And if you don't get the names or the references to follow back on, it's not, it's not useful because you can't track well, who gave you. I mean, my suggestion again is to get legitimate contacts from these people, legitimate contracts from these people, and compare to see if we're going the right direction. And we have done that, Clarence. You have not, because you don't have names and numbers to pass out copies to everybody. That is what's important there. Is they've sat down with them well, I and have, got the numbers. Have we seen any contracts from the other? We haven't seen anything from you either, except what you're saying. You I should, can't. I can't get you a could contract have, without you could have, the mayor's. No, but case. you could have taken the information with names and references and brought it in and passed it Again, out. Again, I cannot get a contract without. The I'm not asking. Case. Not saying you should get a contract, but you can set. You can get. Well, what, which only way you're going to get a true quote? Which we did. Exactly. Which is what we, we got did. three verbal quotes from three different companies to see exactly where we were going to be. Is what you're trying to get at is that we should bid it? You think we should bid it officially? <clears throat> yes. That's, that's going to give you the best scenario of where you're going to go. So, just so you understand, what I did was, what I said before, I asked the question, and it has to be asked in general terms. If we called you and said, we don't want to pick up trash anymore, will you come pick it up for the city, what would you charge? And I was told numbers between 28 and $30 a month just to pick up trash. The other thing I did was I, and I'm speaking to the account representatives of these companies, and I do know their names. And what I asked them was, what is your price for poles? What is your price for tipping fees on recycling and trash? And those are the numbers that we studied and looked at. And with the information that we got, I just don't want it to be represented like we haven't been tr working to get this information because we have. If Brian Robb was here, he could tell you. Brian Dobb, too. And Brian Dobb. He um, went with you to We've one. been asking for all this and batting it around, and there is no doubt in my mind that we can do this cheaper than what we would pay, what the people would pay if we had an outside company come do it. And one thing that I do agree with you on is once we get serious in signing with somebody, we might get a little bit better of a deal, but we are to a place where it's been determined what the long term uh, what the long term idea is and who that we should go with long term. So with <clears throat> so with this if, if we go to the four dollars, that will replace the DOT completely or Adam says it in a complicated way. The <laughs> simple way I would say it is that four dollars pays a dollar to pay for a new trash truck payment. And three dollars to make up the deficit in DOT, and that that and money the will DOT return back to road repair. And yeah, or that can go to the roads and the and the street department equipment. It doesn't go for the roads. That is okay. a totally different fund. Maintaining apologies, maintaining Part of transportation. That's just kind of where you leave. buying equipment that helps maintain the streets. Right, I got you. The big okay. issue is it's not solvent, and our goal is to get it solvent. As we can see, we're in the red, and it's going to continue to be in the red right. unless we make a change. And we can't continue to operate in the red, taking from another budget. The other way I would just say, that I, we were talking this afternoon, is you can think about it. When recycling, you have to kind of think about separately because it's kind of the new, new initiative here. But if you look in the report and look at just the current cost of trash, it actually, on a per user per month, it already is costing $13 or $14 a month. 
Right. It's just that gap is being being paid by by DOT. Right. The tax dollars. It's being paid by tax dollars. Yeah, it's being paid Where, by because it's already being that cost is already being burned born. Yeah, right. so therefore those funds aren't available to replace a dump truck that the street department needs or a grinder the street department needs or other things. It's being in this pocket eaten away. Which is why our equipment street department is old, outdated, and broken down all the time. <clears throat> so that's the whole goal is to get it solved. So I'm asking for permission to advertise for a public hearing for the next council meeting. Four, four. Four, four. I have a motion to, uh, permission to advertise for public hearing. So moved. I have second. a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We'll get that advertised. Okay. Move on down to our department reports. Uh, Superintendent Good. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, Great talk about something else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me too. I didn't even have to talk. So the last time I was up here, we, uh, we were giving our department reports, and I was saying a little bit about um, the funding that we've received and, and how that correlates to um, people realizing that, that parks are a vital part of our economic development. And then um, I posted on our, on our park Facebook page a couple days ago, um, the NRPA, um, every year they do a study about how citizens are interacting with their parks. And I just wanted to point, I gave you all the complete report, but I wanted to point this one out to everybody at home. These were what they called their key findings. Um, and you can see the two on the bottom are four and five adults. When they're choosing a place to live, they're looking for quality of life. They're looking for parks and recreation. It's not a factory. It's not... Um, you know, where mom and dad are necessarily, it's what amenities are available to them and their families. And the other one on the bottom, that 87% of people agree that parks and recreation are an important service provided by their local government. So I want to keep this on the top of our minds and on a, a normal conversation topic because it will um, drive population growth, which will drive our tax base. And the other thing I wanted to point out was last week um, I attended the Eastern Indiana Regional Planning Commission. They're working on their next five-year economic development strategy. And there were about 40 people in attendance. And when we listed all of our community strengths, parks ranked number one out of everything that everyone listed. So this is not only something that we're seeing on a national level, it's something that we're seeing right here in Connorsville. And I just want to keep that, um, as we move into budget season, um, keep that on everybody's mind. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was our pool update. Um, I have some pictures of what the pool looks like right now. Uh, we are on target as of today to open as scheduled on uh, the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. Over the weekend, we had... Um, that is not what our pool looks like right now. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> if only. <laughs> that's not, that's that not it. <laughs> it looks a little worser. There yeah, you go. that's our pool right now. Um, so what's going on right now is you can see all the gutter troughs have been removed. Uh, Spear, a representative from Spear is a pool company. They were out over the weekend. And he did all the testing on the gutters, which is something you guys approved um, a couple months ago. Uh, luckily, he reported back this morning he did not find anything wrong um, with the valves or any of the plumbing. So that is good news. Um, the next step is Natari is the other pool company. They are going to come back and test the troughs. Um, but they do need sunny weather to do that in dry conditions. So it could be uh, next week or the following week before we get um, enough sunny days. So, and depending on what they figure out, if everything checks out, then we are good to move ahead with the new liner and we should get that in 
hopefully by mid-May, just in time to open the pool. But those really nice pool pictures, can you go to those, John? This is just, I wanted to give you guys an idea of what the pool is going to look like. It's going to look a little bit different. Uh, we did go with a dark blue liner. If you remember, we had a very light blue liner. Um, so we went with this dark, darker blue, and the gutters, if you remember, were white before. Uh, we went with a darker gray. Um, for one reason, we just want the pool to look new. We want it not to look like what we just tore out. Um, and I also think for dirt and, you know, cleaning, the darker colors will be better. So that's so we'll, kind of what our pool looks like. It's good that we get normal gutters because a lot of those mm -hmm. were broken. They were. They were, a lot of them were broken. They were um, brittle, um, if not broken yet, on their way to be broken soon. What about the drains and the, like, the strip drains around the deck? You mean like under the slide? No, like where we're walking, like the, like the grates. Yeah. Because a lot of those are broken too. Like, are they? Those will be gray too. Okay. Yeah. They have to custom um, build those. They took measurements for those. Is um, that is that something that we should put on our uh, replacement plan to be able to replace it every ten years? Because it'll probably be brittle. Maybe, and along with sand. Maybe that would be a good schedule for sand and gutters. Just kind of look at that. Every sand filter, you mean? Yeah, because every, I think it's eight years, you have to completely take all the sand out and put all new sand in, which is what we ran into the summer before last in the middle of Fair Week, which was super fun. No, these, um, this is a vinyl liner, right? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, what's the life expectancy of those? Um, I believe he said it was 20 years. So actually our liner was right on target to be replaced. Uh, fiberglass. Uh, Have you gotten bids on liners? No. I'm just joking. I don't sorry. do, I don't do <laughs> pools. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, is fiberglass any more durable or any more expensive? Or? No. Oh, you mean to not have a liner anymore? Yeah, to use a fi fiberglass unit. Yeah, the way our pool um, was installed, it, it we did look into that, and it was wasn't a very viable option um, with the way that our um, I'm trying to remember what all they said. Something about the way our pool was installed, it was installed to have a liner. I see. So to make it not have a liner was like kind of starting over. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. But we did talk about that, to just never have to do a liner again. That's what I was wondering, because liners seem to be um, deteriorating with the UV rays and all the other so hopefully we get our pool opened up um, right on time. Um, a couple other quick things in case you get asked and for anybody that's watching. Uh, the restrooms, we are, we are scheduled to get those open by April 1st. <clears throat> and then the Clio Fountain is also scheduled to open on April 1st. Uh, Smalley's gates are open. You're welcome to go fish. And the bridge, I talked with the contractor this morning and he has received our contract, he's received our deposit, and he is um, on target, he's hoping to start on September the 15th. So that should be done by Christmas. Uh, Second Street Park, the first? September 15th. Okay, I had it down as the first from this afternoon. So oh, okay. September. Okay. Um, and that's just a roundabout date that's yeah. kind of flexible. Oh, yeah. So he, he said they're working on another bridge in Ohio, and it depends on when they get off that job. So um, at 2nd Street, uh, we got a lot of help from the street department, and the basketball court is completely gone. Um, we did go ahead and, you guys, we signed everything with REA. Last week, we got 15000 in additional funding from UEA. And that is going to pay for the next stages of engineering costs. So the geotech and some of the civil engineering that needs to be done is going to get started in the next couple of weeks. 
And the UEA is the Urban Enterprise Association. Yes. Um, so that's the update on 2nd Street. Um, something really exciting for us is we have a record-breaking 450 kids signed up for soccer. We've never had that many kids sign up. Um, we do know that parking is always a problem out there. So on the north side of the park, where there is a lot right now, we are going to be expanding that by 4,500 square feet. So it will go from about 30 parking spaces to 120 parking spaces. Um, so people will need to just drive around. Um, if you can't find a spot right when you pull in, just drive a little bit around and you should be able to find something. There shouldn't be any reason for people to be parking on the highway or on Veterans Memorial. Um, again, we. We get complaints about it every year. We never encourage people to park out there. So there is more parking. You just might have to walk a little bit further. Um, the other things I have are just some dates for you. Uh, we do have lots of events coming up. On April the 7th, we are having our Easter party. It is from 5 to 8. It is a springtime slash Easter party, so everything is free. Um, we'll have pictures with the Easter Bunny. We'll have crafts. We're hoping to have a petting zoo or petting bunnies, mostly pet bunnies and chicks. Um, just family fun from 5 to 8, free food. Um, May the 7th is baseball opening day. We will be having our parade in the afternoon going down to Babe Ruth and after the games that day we're going to do our first uh, movie of the summer. We're going to do a league of their own and we do have our other two movies set for the summer. We're going to do June the 3rd and July the 15th. So all that is coming up as well as we have sports uh, for t-ball, softball, and baseball. Those are all due in by April the 8th. And camp registration, summer discovery, uh, we'll, we'll have those registrations ready on April the 1st. So, it's starting to get really busy at the park. So. <coughs> Any questions? How's the ball field coming down, down the uh, river's edge? Um, they are working on uh, looking at the financing right now. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Chief Jones. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Everyone should have a copy of my monthly report for February. Start off with the overtime. Uh, February we had $4,790.15, uh, $1,870.65 of that was FLSA pay and the remainder was for manpower shortages. Uh, at the bottom of that page you'll see the fuel usage for February was 774 gallons, a total of $1,273.15. Any questions over the first page? Second page you'll see a rundown of our incidents for February, total of 139 incidents, 83% uh, of those are EMS related, 17% are fire related, and then you will see a summary of all the breakdown of the categories of all the different incident types. Next page you'll see our training for February. We had a total of 36 instructive hours of training for the month, and then you'll see a summary of all the different classes that the guys put on. And then on the final page, you will see a list of the inspections that we got accomplished in February. I believe there's nine inspections, so we're starting to get a little bit more consistent with our inspections, and you'll start seeing some different names. After I uh, have a couple more guys pass their certifications, I'll have 10 inspectors. So. We're getting out in the community and starting to make some buildings a little more safe. So, any questions on my report? Thank you, sir. Okay. How Thank often you. are we doing inspections each month? Every month? Yeah, we, we try to get out. Um, I'm getting them scheduled 
with the guys, um, the guys that are certified. Right. I've been working on really hard on getting them out and getting them trained on the new software. We have tablets that we take out and we can use in the field. Um, the inspecting part of it is the easier part. You know, figuring out the new software is the more difficult part. So I've been going out and training them on how to use that. But we're um, we're getting out, you know, two or three times a week in between their training. Obviously, you know, they're doing training usually in the mornings and then in the afternoons if we can squeeze a inspection in, we'll go do that. And we're just randomly picking, uh, trying to start off with the bigger, you know, the bigger box stores and then we'll work our way down. Uh, technically, you're supposed to annually try to get in every commercial property. You know, most places don't have the resources for that, but we're finally getting back to where we've got resources. So. You, you know right off how many um, buildings required to be inspected? In the city of Carnival? Yes. I don't have a number off the top of my head, but I can get that. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Uh, thanks for what you do on the Facebook. Uh, my little boy was even looking at Jenga. Uh, oh. And all that. So the interaction on there is good, too, with yeah. the fire department. It's kind of that outreach, so thanks. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Director Coker. And Mr. Bottomley. So, uh, monthly report, revenue uh, was pretty good for the month of February. Disbursements were a little, um, a little high due to some um, projects we did in February, and I'll talk about them here in a second, but out of the wastewater, there was a $600,000 claim for the um, Headworks project for the engineering of that, so that made it look a little worse than what it normally does. Um, overtime, $5,299 for overtime, and a um, thousand of that was scheduled overtime at the sewer plant. Got my work orders included, the sewer and water reports, the um, projects, well five. Um, we, ch we check a well every year, videotape it, clean it. This year was uh, well five. It's back online for the cost of it. Um, it's been tested, so it's ready to go. So next year we'll start with row one, start back over, go down the line again. Um, we also installed um, a drain line at Woodside Water Tower. And why did we do this? Um, most of the time water towers has a bypass drain where you can empty the tank and clean it and, and, and the resident doesn't lose any water. It, the, it just bypasses. For some reason, the Woodside didn't have that. So we had to add a valve and a drain to drain it so we can get it cleaned properly. Uh, so right now, um, that's been completed. Um, they're scheduled to come in and clean that, I think here in another month or so, to empty it and um, paint it, clean it, and, and, and check it, make sure that everything's good with it. That's the last one we need to do. Then we'll start back over with the water towers next year. Um, Fifth Street drainage project is completed. We had some problems over the winter with the spring, um, kind of develop on that hillside, dripping down on the road, causing it to be a little slick. So we added a couple catch basins and some tile, and that was completed. And I know the gravel is kind of loose up there right now, people's complaining, but that is scheduled to get paved uh, next month, next couple weeks. So <coughs> people can hold off and um, we'll get that paving looking good. Other than that, uh, Aaron and myself attended a two-day stormwater conference at Purdue in February. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. As far as the utility goes, I wanted to tell you a couple things I told the Board of Works today. It looks very favorable that we're going to get a $2 million grant to go towards our um, Headworks project at the wastewater plant. My happiness about that today subsided a little bit when the bid came in at least a couple million higher than we than it was projected to, but um, that is what it is, so at least that will help cover some of those extra costs. We're also looking at um, the Board of Works giving permission today to at least submit some of our water projects to try to get some grant money for some of those too. There's a hundreds of millions of dollars out there right now in grants from the federal government down to the Indiana Finance Authority and we want to try to be in line for some of that. So 
hopefully over the next few years we might get a few more man if we play our cards right. I wanted to also tell you that we opened the compost site back up. Anybody that wants to bring compost down and drop it off, we're open six days a week right now um, during the season water by cleaning in the gardens and stuff. And sometime probably first of May or so, we'll start closing back down to uh, three days a week. And uh, those days will be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But for now, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 3, except on Saturday it's 8 to 11 and 12 to 3 because Tony goes to get lunch. Did anybody have any uh, questions about any of the reports? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Fellows. Good evening. Everybody got a copy of the report? So our law reports were, pardon me? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. 852 law reports, uh, citations issued were 32, injury accidents was only two, uh, non-injury was 40, um, traffic stops, 132 traffic stops. Arrests made was 87. Possession of paraphernalia is uh, 24. Drug-related arrest calls was 13. Any questions on the on the numbers? I have one, Chief. Um, this accident reports. Is there anything that anybody can do with uh, reducing that number? Probably pay attention. Well, I mean, uh, other than the drivers, but I'm. I'm wondering if there's anything that the law enforcement can do to help reduce those figures. They always seem to be... What in particular? You... I don't know. I, I, you'd have to review the reports and see what caused the occurrences. So I'm, I'm just curious of why we have... I don't know what the other cities are. I haven't researched that part. It just seems like we're pretty high in the number of accidents for this size city. Yeah, I mean, most of them aren't, especially non-injuries, it might be backing into a pole at Walmart, I don't know how we can fix that. Right. So. I mean, other than educating drivers, but I didn't know if you, if you guys could, uh, if you guys ever said, look, if we would do this, if this would help. Yeah. I, so nothing I, of that ever came about. Look, as far as, uh, like, a. Other, uh, other officers coming to you and something? saying, hey, um, you know, I know our reports are primarily this. But they've never done that in my take. I don't think we ever have. Probably not even when you work there. No. But I mean, that's just hard to... I never paid I mean, attention it's, it's to more so, more so driving issues or not paying attention, mostly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So the report... I, Body cams finally came in on all of a sudden on Friday, just showed up. Every time we just contacted them a week ago, they didn't indicate to us at all that they were on their way. And they just showed up Friday, so we're happy about that. However, uh, we have to wait on them now to provide somebody to come and train us on them, and not, no idea when that's going to be. So um, in the next meeting, we have created a new SOP for the use of the cameras, and that will be presented next the next meeting. Um, our cars are finally being taken care of, getting upfitted. Uh, we went with John Jones. Um, I checked into yours, Clarence, and it ended up being roughly about fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars cheaper to go to Kentucky. That's after all the upfit, all the dock fees, everything. Um, so um, I did research into that, and that's what the price came to. Um, I think it's good that we stayed in the state of Indiana. Close to local. Yeah. Yes. And that was, the upfit well, guy down there in Kentucky also said, if something goes wrong with this equipment or this wiring, how are you going to get it to us? I said, I'm not. Exactly. I'm going to keep Absolutely. it up here to get it. I'm not driving it down there to right. take care of nothing. So, yeah. um, so that's the report on the vehicles. It, they said anywhere from four to six weeks before they're finally done. So. Uh, also, as you know, um, Jackie Payton retired, uh, and so our, we have a new secretary, Deborah Goins, and so far she's doing fantastic, but this is her first day by herself, so I think she'll be fine. Our two new hirees, uh, we finally got their 
everything done with PERF last week, about Wednesday or Thursday. We swarm in Thursday, Friday. Friday. Uh, and in the meantime, they were doing their 40 hour pre basic, which they just finished today, which gives them arrest powers until they can go to the academy. September's still not open. We checked today, and the academy's not open for September yet. Um, and I am uh, doing testing. I did interviews last week for the replacement of Mark Coons, um, and I think we scheduled for this Saturday or Tuesday. I think we gave them both for the written and PT test. So, any questions? So the new officers, they can't do anything until after they get to the academy? No, uh, we did 40-hour pre-basic. Um, they did that. Yeah, that's for a year, so they can have arrest powers for a year. Mm -hmm. But they'll be riding with one of our right. officers now, but they'll be able to do whatever they do with them out exactly. on the street. So, yeah. be good experience for them. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. a good start for them. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, for the month of February, we had 11 hours, 8 minutes of meeting production, 16 hours, 51 minutes of original production. Uh, of course, that was wrapping up the uh, basketball season. We did quite a bit of that. I um, wanted to mention that uh, we had a pretty good show today, uh, Spartan Sports Report. We have the new um, football coach uh, came on. So um, if you haven't watched that, you might want to catch that. Uh, it was a pretty good interview. So that's uh, Coach Ryan Lynch. And that airs uh, weekdays at 6 p.m. Of course, it's on our YouTube channel, Local TV3. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, John. Chief Gordon. I'm the last one tonight, so I'm bringing up the rear. So. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So everybody should have a copy of a paper report. Um, we had 270 calls uh, for service in the month of February. So 627 for the year so far. A little down, but I mean, it's kind of hard to base a whole year off two months. But we're, we're still right in our statistical averages. Um, I do have one vacant medic position that we're advertising for. Haven't had any leads so far. Uh, I do have one medic that's still off uh, due to a motor vehicle accident that was non-work related. Uh, I had on there a legislative update, House Bill 1112. That was the one I was kind of watching the, the closest. Uh, it was signed by the governor on the 15th. It is law. However, the reimbursement doesn't go into effect until July 1st of next year. So it was a win, but we're going to have to wait a little bit to, to see the, the proceeds of that. I have two EMTs that are applying to go to a paramedic program. Uh, we're going to they're applying to multiple. Their, their primary picks is the IU program, the IU Lifeline program. So uh, fingers crossed on that, that, that we get uh, at least one. We're hoping both uh, accepted, but at least one would be great. Uh, we uh, got our flagpole installed. That was started last fall um, and uh, just now got it up. So we ran into, took forever to get it because they're aluminum and then then we had snow, and so finally, finally we were able to get that thing up. So, uh, we're gearing up for our fair and festival season. Um, we already have several things on the books uh, for that that we're covering or um, having a booth or something of that nature. So that's, uh, that's starting to gear up. We uh, did fully implement our one call um, for helicopters, not so much for our benefit is more for dispatch's benefit, but it does help us out as well. So that is uh, fully implemented now. So the dispatch can make one phone call, and then that comm center, which is what a helicopter calls their dispatch, um, will find us a helicopter if there's one available anywhere close. So um, in list of closest to furthest away. So. Um, the last thing I had, which was not on, I didn't have typed out, but we did have a uh, DEA inspection last week, which is kind of an ongoing thing I've kind of talked about. Uh, we had to deal with the state, now we're dealing with the feds. Um, went Overall, went very well. There's one issue we've got, we're going to have to work out between reading ourselves on an exchange program with medications. So um, I've done some uh, calls with the head of Reed Pharmacy. Um, 
actually with both of the heads of Reed Pharmacy, and they're working with their counterparts um, at the DEA, and then we're doing our stuff with the state. So hopefully we'll we'll be able to find some center ground, figure out how we can do this seamlessly and without a lot of uh, disruption. So does anybody have any questions on anything? Thank you, yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Anyone down to old business? Does anyone have any old business? Miscellaneous business, I have a few things. Um, as a reminder, and John, I'll make sure we put out a reminder on Facebook and a city page on March 29th, the transfer station will be closed other than trash, uh, our own local trash, because we're getting the scales recalibrated. And they need the whole day to do that. They can't have any truck traffic in there when they do that. So March 29th, the transfer station will be closed. Um, on the 31st at 7 p.m., the state of the city will be aired on TV3. So that's 31st at 7 p.m. I sent out a, uh, a packet. In the, I'm sorry, in the packet, you, there was a proposed ordinance on the uh, trees and planting guide. Um, I will sent that to you guys, the Board of Works. Just review those. If you have questions or comments, just uh, reach out to me, and uh, we can look at everything. I can discuss it with you or whatever. Um, but there's a lot in there. It's a very lengthy document. Uh, those of you who don't know, I used to be a certified arborist, and that is where I get the thing to report. That's where a lot of these resources come from in this document. It lists the species. As far as trees, grasses, ornamental grasses, uh, shrubs, on what's an invasive species, what should be planted in the state of Indiana, what should be planted in the state of Indiana. And all this goes into line with our right of way in between the sidewalks and the curbs and what you can plant in right of ways, what you can't put in right of ways, where you can put them in right of ways, where you can't put them in right of ways. That's all species driven and it's all in this book. It's also a good resource for homeowners who want to put the proper tree in their yard. Um, we don't, can't control that but it's a good resource for that individual as well. Um, I also included the ANSI Z133A printing standards um, to be as part of this document as well, and that tells how to properly prune a tree. Um, a lot of people think you go down and you just top a tree and that's good for it. That is the worst thing you could ever do for a tree is top a tree. And actually it's a death sentence for a tree and there are proper pruning methods and this spells out everything and they're how to properly do that. So read those, um, look at them. We're not gonna do anything with this right now. I want everyone to have plenty enough time to read this because it is a lengthy document. Um, and then the ordinance will be here. So the ordinance spells out this book will be followed as the guide. So read through that and um, if you have any questions, reach out to me and I can sit down with you and go over whatever you wanna go over. Um, and that's all I had, any other miscellaneous business? Right now, anyone from the public have anything to say? Do you want me to say my name and address? Yes, yes you do. Yes. Brian Durham, 2205 Ohio Avenue. I just wanted to give counsel an update uh, from area planning. We have two major things that we're working on. One's very simple, it's more of a correction. So, our, our current rules in the zoning code do not allow you to work from home. So any person in the last year who's worked from home has been in violation of our zoning code. We do not have a special exception. So we're working on changing that. Uh, COVID really showed that we probably need to update that. Uh, they were last updated in 1993. That needs to move forward so that people can work from home without worry or additional fees and a public hearing because that's what it would take right now to work from home. The other thing we are working on is a uh, solar ordinance. Uh, right now, if you wanted to put solar on your house, that's perfectly fine. Uh, one of the problems is uh, in communities, if you wanted to take, say, a thousand acres of land and put uh, a solar field, you could do that tomorrow if you wanted to with uh, no rules or regulation. Jeff has, has helped with that tremendously. That's a fair assessment when you say, Jeff, that tomorrow if somebody submitted an application to put a huge solar complex, there's nothing that... Potentially, there's not. Yeah, yeah, that we can, can can do for that. So Thursday is our uh, our meeting, area planning meeting on that. Uh, I met Bill and I met last Friday for 
after a, our after our UEA meeting, uh, I don't think Bill left my office until about 4:30 that day. So we spent a lot of time going through uh, the uh, model ordinance that exists for the state of Indiana to make it look our more are in align with Fayette County and the city of Connorsville. So if any of you would like to come on Thursday, it's not a public hearing. We'll be talking about it. Encourage your input. Uh, we hope to have a public hearing in April, latest at May. Uh, and then based on that recommendation, you guys will get that to either approve or, or not approve that recommendation to go into the zoning code. Just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Any questions? No. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Brian. Yes. Anyone else from the public? I can't see it. My Clint's gone. You're hiding from me, Clint. I was talking. You were talking. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. If not, take the motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. The motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Have a good evening.